Uh, I, love, I hope you guys send that one to me. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely. good. That's awesome. Yes. That is good. You're both ready? All right, excellent. We can kick this off. Sir, if you can, state, state your rank, your full name, and where you came from. Okay, uh, I guess today, is, as of today, Brigadier General Jerry Carter. Uh, I'm from York, Pennsylvania. Okay. Growing up in York, Pennsylvania, can you describe growing up? Yeah, so York, York uh, Pennsylvania, great, great environment, very small town, probably about 45,000. Uh, inner city uh, kid for me. Uh, went to William Penn Senior High School, but um, uh, not a lot of opportunities, but um, we, we made the best of it. So growing up there, was college an option for you? So, so uh, we coming out of high school was college an option? Yeah, so, uh, you know, quite frankly, um, I came from a family that uh, couldn't afford to send me to college. So college uh, through my parents was not really an option for me, although uh, they sent me off, but I wasn't able to stay. Uh, and after I, um, I dropped out of college, I was on a yellow footprint in Paris Island, and uh, I think my Marine Corps career began from there. Uh, why did you choose the Marines? You could have joined any service, but you cho chose the Marine Corps. Why is that, sir? Yeah, I just love what the Corps stands for. You know, camaraderie, esprit de corps, uh, team, and um, the physical fitness and the challenge of it. I'll tell you, I, I just couldn't be anything else but a Marine. Excellent, excellent. How would you describe your time as an enlisted Marine, sir? Yeah, very, very memorable. Uh, I would say uh, my 30-year career as of today has shaped my, my time as an enlisted Marine. The things that I've learned, uh, the teamwork, all built upon the enlisted Marine. Excellent, excellent. Now, around the time that you were a corporal of Marines, you decided that you wanted to become a leader of Marines and officer of Marines. What motivated you to choose that path? Yeah, I, I saw some, I had some fantastic role models. The likes of, uh, that grew up through the ranks of um, Major General Cliff Stanley, uh, folks like um, uh, then Lieutenant General Ron Bailey, uh, General Gaskin, retired as a three-star, Coleman. They were sterling examples of, of what a Marine officer should be like, all built upon like uh, Lieutenant General Peterson and very at the very beginning, uh, Lieutenant Branch being the first African-American officer in the United States Marine Corps. Yeah, fantastic story. When I was a midshipman at the ROTC unit at Morehouse College, I was actually a bellman, and General Stanley uh, was being escorted by then Major Bailey coming down to speak to our ROTC unit. And uh, when they came and talked to us and the things that they laid upon us, I mean, just absolutely motivating. And that's where it all started for me. That's right. How did you come to learn about that? Yeah, I'll tell you, um, I was wandering around at the Boost program, which is a broad officer selection and training program. Um, I went to a big university, which really wasn't good for me. And uh, when I went through the Boost program, there was a master chief, Master Chief Jeff Hutchison, that absolutely meant the world to many of us. He recruited out of our Boost class probably about 15 of us, which was significant for that uh, unit. And when he came in there, he was hands-on. He kept, you know, good mentorship and oversee, uh, you know, oversaw us throughout the, uh, the uh, career. And uh, I owe it all to Master Chief Jeff Hutchison. So you chose Morehouse College to uh, attend uh, ROTC schools. That's right. Why Morehouse College was it important to attend an HBCU? If so, why? So at the time, I didn't understand the significance of HBCU. I really was looking for an opportunity. I wanted to make sure that I stayed in school. Uh, but what I found out when I got down to Morehouse is a, a, the family-oriented environment and then a historical black uh, uh, college piece of it. Uh, pretty awesome. I learned a lot about myself and our heritage by going to HBCU. So if I had to do it over again, that's where I would absolutely start. When you were there and when you commissioned in 92, did you ever envision yourself becoming a No, no, not at all. And I think there's many in the audience, my friends would go, that guy? Uh, there's absolutely no way. And I don't think anybody 
say that they came in a court to become a general officer. I mean, it's something that happens along the way, and then by the time you get to that rank, I mean, I'm brand new uh, to the ranks, but it's really an honor to be here and really a duty uh, to serve. So I'm honored to be here, but never, never saw in a mile, mile away, a thousand years that I would be here. Excellent. Excellent. What's, if you could, sir, if you're, if you're willing to share, what's one of the biggest challenges you face in your career so far? Yeah, you know, um, becoming that, um, that true leader, true north, and making sure that we stay true to the game in terms of leading Marines. Uh, as you know, um, our business is a tough business. Only 1% of the nation serves uh, in the military, and I'm honored to be here. And then when you have to uh, take a Marine to combat and, and the family members expect you to be home, bring them home, uh, that, that weighs pretty heavy on you. But it's our duty. Uh, we have a mission to accomplish, and I'm honored to serve. What are you most proud of? Oh, wow, my family. You know, the Corps, when you talk about um, being successful in the Marine Corps or any service, it really starts with the family. So there's the familiar family, there's the Marine Corps family, but there is quite a bit, so I'm very proud of my family. Um, how many, uh, you're married, how many children do you have, sir? So I'm married to a wonderful wife of 27 years, and I have two remarkable children. Excellent, excellent. So you had Mr. Braxton that obviously pinned one of the stars on your collar. What does it mean? So, so it, it means a great deal to me. So I thought very carefully who I wanted to participate in the ceremony. And when you look at the, uh, the lineage of Mumford Point Marines, and just a few short years ago, in the early 40s, I mean, um, African Americans were not allowed to serve side by side with others. And that segregation, and then today, executive order passed, and now you have a young African American Marine that is able to rise to the ranks of general officer. So what? The Mumford Point started out in shape for us, allows the diversity that the Marine Corps promotes today. And so I'm honored to be here and again, really thankful that I've had an opportunity to spend some time with a Mumford Point Marine. So this is one thing we always like to ask, what is your best advice for success in the Marine Corps? Yeah, work hard. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it. Uh, I think the, uh, the sky is the limit, certainly in the Marine Corps. I'm a testament to some of those things. But uh, hard work and dedication will get you there every time. Do you have any questions in the We are good, sir. Yeah, if good. there's anything else that you'd like to add. No, I'm just honored to be here. Really, really appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks, bro.